Hello everyone, today I'm continuing the Mach 4 basic series and we'll be talking to you about G-Code. Our software attracts users of all abilities and if you are someone who's never heard of G-Code before and you're jumping into the world of CNC, you are not alone and I'm here to help. G-Code is a programming language that provides instructions to your machine. These instructions can be simple, like move to this position, turn on this output, or pause. They can also get more complicated, allowing you to create intricate and complicated projects. In order to use Mach 4, you don't need to memorize every G-Code command that's out there. In fact, most of the time your CAD and CAM software will handle the heavy lifting and output G-Code that you can use a million times without any issue. Still, it's never a bad idea to get more information and understanding the basics of what your cut file is telling your machine to do is very important. G-Code uses words that consist of a letter, often G, followed by a number. G words can specify machining modes and functions. Other letters you'll see a lot of are X, Y, Z, and A. Those are movement commands followed by a numerical value and usually designate the endpoint of a motion command. While you can accomplish a wide variety of functions with G code words, you can categorize all of them as either modal or non-modal. Modal commands remain active until you change them. For example, the commands that designate what units to read all values in are G20 and G21. You can use G20 to set your units to inches and they'll remain in inches until you use a G21 to change them to millimeters. Non-modal commands only affect the line that they are included in. G53 is a non-modal command, for instance, that forces the value in its line to be read as a machine coordinate. The next line is read as it normally is in work coordinates, unless an additional G53 is included. If you're not familiar with machine coordinates and work coordinates, you can check out that video in our Mach 4 Basic series for more information. G-code can be processed by Mach 4 in two ways. First, you can load a G-code file. These files can be handwritten or created by a CAM program. You can also write out G-code commands on the spot in the MDI or Manual Data Input field. Whether you use MDI or load your own G-code, Mach 4 interprets the information and sends it along to your machine. This shows a very basic line of G-code in the MDI field, G00X1Y1. This includes a G-code word, G00, and a position, X1Y1. G00 is a rapid linear move to a designated position, in this case, X1, Y1. How do I know that? In my case, it's one of the G-code commands I've memorized, but when I first started troubleshooting G-code, I used the G-code manual religiously. It's included in the help docs and it's a great resource if you're starting out. And the help docs, if you click enable, are right here. And the G-code manual is right here. There's another new tool that you can use to start familiarizing yourself with G-Code, and that's the modal wizard. This is brand new. Nobody else has this. I'm going to show you the wizard in all its glory first, and then I'll show you how you can add it to your collection of wizards. Once you've installed the new wizard, you'll go to wizard, select wizard, and open it from the list. Now let's start by breaking down what we're seeing here. The three columns are modal group, active G-Code, and a description. The first column gives you the name of the modal group, which includes feed mode, plane selection, absolute or incremental, arc center mode, feed rate mode, units, cutter comp state, height offset state, active can cycle, retract Z level selection, scale mode, modal macro, spindle mode, active coordinate system, cutting mode, coordinate system rotation, polar mode, and compensation mode. Quite the list. The next column tells you which G-code command from that group is active. A bunch of these are activated by your settings in Mach 4 and are only changed if the G-code says so. The last column here gives you a description of what is active. I think this will be particularly helpful for anyone learning G-code or just trying to get a handle on the important parts of it because it tells you that not only is G00 the active G-code in the feed mode group, but that it is a linear rapid move. Now here's something cool. If we change any of the modal commands, watch what happens. The affected line lights up yellow and updates to show us the new active G-code and its description. I'm going to run through a G-code file in just a moment that was written as a machine warm-up. It shows off quite a few modal groups, but first I want to talk to you about this bottom section. This section shows the last buffered values for several letter-specific commands. What does that mean? Well, some G-code commands require additional specifications. Let's use the example from before. 
G01X1Y1. This instructs my machine to make a linear feed move to the designated position. I can also specify a feed rate for it to use during that move by adding F and then a number. We'll do 10, which is a nice, slow, save speed rate. The letters feed values into the G code and can mean different things based on what command they are attached to. Some of these you'll see often as you run new G code files, while others are less common. What this section does is show you which ones you've used in your G code file and more importantly, their most recent value. Let's load up that G code file I mentioned and watch how the wizard reacts. Now, when you see the toolpath, there are a lot of things going on in this file. It was created as a warm up for one of our test machines, so it has some lines, arcs, and a few different work offsets. For our purposes, though, the toolpath doesn't matter. I want to focus on what's happening in the G code. The first few lines of code you're seeing set several modal states, and you'll see this pretty often in your G code files. This first section involves movements that are in machine coordinates. Notice the G53. This is not a modal state, so we won't see it on the wizard. You'll notice throughout this warm-up file that we switch between rapid moves with G00 and feed moves with G01 pretty frequently. That is something you're going to see fairly often in your own G code files. The next section is where we see our first letter specific command. The F command will set the feed rate and you'll see it change in the F box and the bottom section of our wizard. If you were watching carefully, you also saw our active coordinate system change to G55. That G55 is a new work offset. The cutting mode was also changed from constant velocity to exact stop, but that change was based on our CV settings in Mach 4 and not a command in the G code. At this point, we're back in the G54 work offset. This is the one you'll most commonly be using when you start cutting your own projects. Now there's a G68 in the middle of this section. This rotates the coordinate system a set number of degrees around a designated point. G69 is used before we move on to the next section to cancel out that rotation. That one's really important. You always want to cancel your rotation. Things get a little complicated here as we are calling a subroutine. This is more advanced stuff, but notice that the wizard continues to work the same way. It shows us in the bottom section that our last M value is 98, which calls the subroutine, and that our O value is 1, 2, 3, 4, which is the number of the subroutine we're using. I want to point out that I'm running this G code file with no machine connected. I'm using the built-in simulator to familiarize myself with the G code. I have increased the speed on the video to save time, but I'd recommend doing the opposite when you get ready to practice. Slow down the rapid and feed rates and really pay attention to what your G code is telling your machine to do. See if you can catch the last few modal group changes as the example file finishes. Throughout this G code file, we've changed a bunch of modal states back and forth and back and forth to make sure all of our settings return to the default values that we set up originally in Mach 4. We're going to hit the reset button. This sets all of the modal states from what they were in the G code to what they are in our settings. You'll also notice a string of G code at the bottom of Mach 4 here. These are your current modal states as dictated by your settings in Mach 4. Let me show you how you can get this wizard before anyone else. Well, anyone who hasn't watched this video. Use the link in the description to get to our support files folder on the FTP server as shown here. To download the modal wizard file, you're going to right click, save link as, and choose where you want it to go. The easiest way to do this is just to go right into your Mach 4 directory and choose the wizards folder and save it as modal wizard. Mine's already in there, so it added the one, but yours should just save as modal wizard. Once you hit save, you can open up Mach 4 and it'll be there and ready to use. That's it. I hope you enjoy this new tool and feel a bit more comfortable dealing with G-code. Stay safe, be creative, and as always, happy CNCing!